Hi, welcome to our channel Everyday Movie Recap. For today, we will recap a supernatural action movie called Legion from the year 2010. It follows the story of when God decided to send legions of angels to earth to bring the apocalypse. Have you seen this movie yet? If not, sit back, relax, and enjoy, the movie begins as a man drops from the sky. He is wounded and strips off his clothing. From his back, a pair of wings appears. He then proceeds to cut off his wings using a knife. He cries in pain but proceeds. After that, a halo appears above his head, and removes the collar from his neck. He goes to a warehouse to look for medkits to treat his wounds. Then, he searches for weaponry and equips it. He comes out and is about to escape when two patrolmen see him and demands him to surrender. He listens closely to the radio calls from the policeman and exclaims that it has already begun. They must hurry or else it will be too late. He pretends to put his hands up but takes the officer hostage. The other officer then starts to transform into a creepy monster as his teeth become sharp and his eyes change colors. He talks with Michael in a deeper voice warning him that he disobeyed orders. The man then says he doesn't follow anyone's command and they engage in a shootout. He nimbly dodges the cop's bullet and manages to shoot him. Then he takes his car and drives away. His name is Michael. He is a fallen angel who turned against God's rules. The scene then shifts to another man named Jeep and a pregnant woman named Charlie. Charlie asks if he's had more nightmares. Jeep says yes and she anxiously tells him not to worry too much about his father. Jeep replies that he's more worried about Charlie. Charlie then says he is not even the father of the baby. Within a month, she will be a mother to that child. Jeep then assures her that he will be there for her. After that, Jeep's father, Bob, starts opening his restaurant. He tries to fix the television that seems to have lost its signal. Percy, the cook in his restaurant teases him. Some of the customers enjoy their food, but some, like Audrey, do not. She gets scolded by her mother Sandra that she doesn't like the way she's dressed. Her father tries to rebut but Andre just shuts them down. On the road, a man named Kyle is seemingly lost. He gets to the restaurant, sees the pregnant Charlie, and asks her for directions. Knowing that he's still far from his destination, he decides to get to the restaurant. On the other hand, Sandra argues with her husband. But there is nothing they can do because Bob's son is still fixing their car. He checks on his son, who is busy fixing the crib for Charlie's baby. He scolds Jeep telling him that he needs to get his life together and to stop taking care of Charlie. But he argues that he's been having visions of terrible things happening to Charlie. So he feels obliged to protect her and her future child. Bob thinks otherwise and he goes back to his restaurant. It seems the television has lost its signal again, so he tries to fix it. He tries asking Percy for help, but he reports that he only hears the same message on all stations. On the other hand, Kyle gets to call his ex-wife and says that he will be there to take care of their divorce papers. But suddenly, the line cuts off. Just then, an old woman enters the restaurant. She has a creepy smile, but Charlie still serves her. She inquires about the baby's well-being, but she proceeds to say that the baby will burn in hell. All babies will burn. Disgusted and creeped by this Charlie snaps and back away. Other people in the restaurant also hear this. The old lady continues eating his raw meat which is now getting swarmed by flies. The woman responds angrily to Sandra's attempts at conversation, calling her names. As soon as Howard rises to address the elderly woman, she bites a large portion of flesh from his neck. She stumbles backward as Percy throws a frying pan at her, but she gets back up as if nothing happened. And with that, the woman leaps to her feet and begins to crawl on the ceiling. After obtaining a shotgun, Bob fires at the lady. Jeep retrieves the shotgun but holds back from firing after the woman. Smacks Bob, Kyle shoots her several times as she rushes towards him. Finally, she falls on her feet, as Howard starts to lose a lot of blood, everyone in the diner rushes to tend to him, after Howard and his family are in Kyle and Percy's car. They begin to drive to the hospital, they come across a huge swarm of locusts that looks like a cloud, Bob observes a huge swarm of locusts buzzing overhead, obstructing the sun, as Kyle's automobile rushes back to meet them. After taking the elderly woman's body outside, the men notice a police car pulling up. When the squad car comes to a stop, Michael gets out. Michael is warned to keep away by Bob, who points the gun at him. Bob goes on to justify his actions, Michael acknowledges that Bob and the others are unaware of what is happening to the planet and appears unmoved by Bob's story. Bob gives up the firearm, which Michael takes and points at Bob's head, stepping outside. Percy tries to defuse the situation, after giving the matter some thought, Michael informs them that other individuals who resemble the elderly woman will be visiting shortly, he gives Bob his shotgun back and gives all of them guns, even Charlie, they then block the doors to prepare for what's coming, as dusk approaches, Michael brings the guys to the roof so they may have a better look at their adversary, they hear an ice cream truck pulling up and a tall, tall man gets out, he lets out a loud shriek upon seeing the men, and then his limbs begin to extend out, the men fire at it till it dies as it charges towards them, when they notice other cars coming, Michael gives them the order to fire at will, Michael tells them that the enemy is no longer humans and gives them an order to start shooting. Howard is being pulled away by one of the attackers who breaks through the windows, Charlie, Sandra, and Audrey all jump in to assist, 
but just as Charlie is about to aid, another attacker grabs her, Michaels helps her and breaks the man's arm, he fires at the windows, the enemies begin to retreat, he then tells the reality to Sandra that Howard is now gone. Michael explains that God has lost faith in mankind and has sent his angels to destroy the human race, saying they've never heard of angels performing such a thing, everyone is in shock, how does Michael know so much about their enemy, Jeep wonders, furthermore, Michael discloses that he was once an angel, Bob adds, I don't believe in God, and calls the entire thing ridiculous, according to Michael, God shares Bob's sentiments and has lost trust in people, then Michael claims that he is simply here to protect Charlie and her child since the child is the only thing that can save humanity. And no matter what they believe in, the people outside want them all dead, Jeep speaks with Michael and inquires about his background. When God gave him an order that he didn't believe in, Michael, a general in God's army, claims he made the decision to disobey God, although God had lost trust in humanity, Michael asserts that he still does, Jeep queries Michael about how he has kept his faith, according to Michael, despite the hate and darkness that permeates the globe, there are still glimmers of light in the people like Jeep who refuse to give up and submit. Michael remembers that moment when he disobeyed his orders. Michael hears Gabriel say that people have brought this upon themselves, Gabriel asserts that humans have a greater duty to submit to God, whereas Michael claims that angels are responsible for guiding humanity, Gabriel claims that it is too late for Michael to stop the others from eradicating humanity, even though Michael knows deep down that he is correct because God created his heart with all of God's love. Michael observes as hundreds of angels cover the heavens, the next morning, Sandra hears an odd noise when she wakes up, Howard's cries reach her as she makes her way to the back of the diner, she peers through the rear door and finds Howard, who is upside down and covered with lumps. She escapes after Kyle and Audrey are unable to keep her inside, Sandra approaches Howard, who explodes, spitting acid, Sandra is saved from the bomb by Percy arriving just in time, after carrying her back to the diner, Percy falls on the ground, it had burned Percy's back all the way through to the bone, Audrey is trying to feed Sandra while she is restrained to a chair. Sandra then accuses Audrey of causing everything that has happened to them, inside the restaurant, Audrey flips, between radio stations until she finds one different from all the monotonous broadcast, survivors are fighting back against the possessed, according to the broadcast. However, Michael argues that they cannot take the chance of leaving because doing so would simply make Charlie an easier target. Later on in their conversation, Charlie recalls when she nearly had the baby aborted, but because she is undecided, things got to the point where the doctor was unable to execute the abortion, so she was left with the child, this is the reason she hates the child, a car then drives up nearby to fill up some gas. But another group ambushes them. Outside, a dad and a kid are running for their life. This gave Kyle the bright idea to start running toward them and help, not thinking that this could be a trap. The child bites down on Kyle's neck a few moments later, proving himself to be another possessed individual, when Audrey reaches down to assist, her ammunition runs out and she begins to, get overpowered, when Charlie realizes Michael isn't assisting, she makes the decision to act independently, Michael consents to get Audrey back since he doesn't want Charlie to get hurt, using the gasoline pump as a flamethrower. Michael dispatches the enemies quickly, after that, he grabs Audrey, and the two of them scramble back into the restaurant, as Charlie rushes to get water, he discovers the child has entered the diner, the child tries to stab Charlie, but Charlie is able to block her until the child's knife slips and slashes off his fingers. The lights go out once more as Charlie kicks the child out, the child grabs Bob out of nowhere, but Michael grabs him back while Jeep shoots the possessed kid. Charlie unfortunately succumbs to her stress and goes into labor, as Charlie starts to give birth, they hear a constant, loud horn booming from the heavens, from the roof, Bob and Jeep can see the horde of possessed people waiting for them, Charlie continues to push until a baby's cries can be heard above the stillness, Sandra is shown the baby by Audrey, but she is attempting to figure out how to get out from under her constraints, Charlie inquires about their safety, to which Michael, replies that they are not, but that at least the child will now have an opportunity to survive and guide humanity, when the possessed hear the baby wailing, they also begin to scream, an angel descends from the skies as the horn blows once again, Michael claims that Gabriel was sent by God to complete the task that he had been given at first, Jeep understands that Michael must have disobeyed the rule in order to keep the baby from being born, Charlie asks for an explanation, and Michael reveals that he was first assigned the responsibility of getting rid of the baby, however, he also discloses that the baby's birth was not planned, God's will has changed, and the future is no longer predetermined, Sandra steals the baby away from Audrey, Sandra plans to turn the infant over to the possessed in order to get them to leave them in peace, the horns get louder as Gabriel approaches, Sandra is shot by Michael as the doors fling open, Gabriel then swings his mace at Jeep but he manages to dodge, Bob tries to fire Gabriel, but he moves too quickly and uses his wings as protection, he then quickly uses the knife and disposes of Bob, Michael orders Jeep to follow the instructions and keep the baby safe, as Charlie, Audrey, and Michael approach the police vehicle, cautiously, every possessed person stops and lets them through, Gabriel refers to Michael as his disobedient son, 
while Michael emphasizes that Gabriel was always the one who was God, Michael's lack of wings surprises Gabriel, who warns him that his disobedience will have consequences. Michael claims that because the child has already been born, nothing matters anymore, Michael requests a ceasefire from Gabriel. But Gabriel says they have to settle their fight here and now, and with that, the two get ready to battle as G pulls off, toward the settlement they've heard about on the radio, Gabriel uses all his might to hit Michael while Michael uses his guns to hit Gabriel, eventually, Michael is wounded by Gabriel's wings. But Michael rushes behind him and chokes him until he submits, Michael is then stabbed by Gabriel using his mace, Gabriel watches his brother die and lets out a tear as Michael falls to the ground, then Michael lights up and then disappears, Jeep realizes these are the instructions Michael was referring to when he sees Mark starting to emerge on his forearm while driving, Bob is still alive when Gabriel finds him, but he has been releasing gas and letting it fill the space before lighting it. Gabriel takes off, but the diner and the possessed people outside are consumed by a huge fireball, but Gabriel still survives that and catches up to Jeep, Charlie, and Audrey, he nearly snatches the baby, Jeep speeds up the car to escape and suddenly stops the brakes, Charlie and the infant both miraculously live, and Jeep helps them climb up, then Gabriel shows up and corners Charlie, Jeep then slams into Gabriel, sending the two of them flying off a cliff, Gabriel is about to attack Jeep, but Michael steps in to save Jeep, Gabriel is in disbelief when he sees that Michael openly rebellious but was once more resurrected, Michael is too quick for Gabriel to catch on, and he cuts right through Gabriel before he can strike him. The defeated Gabriel is then spared by Michael, telling Jeep he is the real protector, Michael leaves, Michael advises Jeep to maintain his faith when she inquires about their potential reunion, the movie ends as Jeep and Charlie arrive at their new home, ready to raise the last hope of human survival. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy the movie. For more content like this, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on our channel. See you tomorrow.